Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video doing what I said I was going to do yesterday, which was following up and seeing what's going to be going on in the upcoming month of, uh, I forgot what month it is. I'm sorry, I've been so busy with work, I'm not even sure. February is ending, so we're going to be going into March, so we're going to take a look at the upcoming events happening in March. I think this month is also pretty... Mmm... Pretty easy. <laughs> Not a lot of things are actually happening as we wait for Lost Belt 6 and some of the other stuff coming on later on in the year. But regardless, let's take a look and see what they got. So as of right now, just to give an update of where we are, the Spring has Sprung campaign is going to be starting up pretty soon. Um, and the Valentine's Day is, uh, event is ending on the 26th of February, and there's only 28 days in February, so... Let's go into March. So what's to be expected in March? Well, Slapstick Museum. Which is supposed to, let me, sorry, I know someone once told me that they bothered, they got bothered by how quickly I scroll through some of these, so I'm trying not to go too quick. So the 23 million download campaign ends on March 3rd, and then right when it ended is when this event started, which was the Slapstick Museum. So I would expect Slapstick Museum to start for us on March 2nd. So Slapstick Museum, this features on Mikasu. You're going to be able to get his Phantom Thief outfit. The only requirement for this event is for you to clear Fuyuki. And yeah, the summoning campaign is also pretty simple. It's got Amakasu on it, it also has uh, Suna on it, and it has Jinki. And it also has, in terms of raid up, which these will all chances are have their own banners. Similar to how the female um, Valentine's Day worked out. We got the twins, we got the horseman, we got Napoleon, we got Odysseus, we have Vlad, we have um, Waver. We've got Nemo, we got Arjuna, we have Car. Funny enough, Arjuna and Karna uh, on separate days. Ozymandias, we have Tesla, we have Enkidu, and then the, for the finals, we have Achilles, we have Kukulain, Kukalin, Alter, and then Li Shuwen, who is the one who will be on the last day by himself. That's really weird. But sure, let's go with it. And there you go. If any of these units are specific calling out to you, you'll be able to get them on a raid up on their own banner. And if you are desperate for them, for whatever reason, you can go ahead and pity them if that's so what you want. But for the vast majority of people, we're just kind of going to be kind of skipping. Um, there's also going to be, of course, limited uh, craft essences, which will be called 2023 for us, not 2021, which will feature coup on it. It'll feature a whole bunch of men. Thankfully, there's always something to do with Caldea boys, which is not something that they do with the female ones, which is that they always offer at least one free CE of any of your choosing. It can even be the three ones, which is really funny. But you can also be a four or a five. I typically use it on a five or a four, depending on which one I like the art of and which of the men uh, do I care for the most. And then there's going to be a summoning campaign three. This is really funny that this is one and two. Why is it called 1 and 2? Probably because it features different CEs on it. That's why it's called that. And then we have something Campaign 3, which has our boy Voyager on it. Voyager isn't coming back this year for the collab, so you're going to have to wait another year if you want him for that. But you can pick him up here if you so want. There you go. I like Voyager. Voyager's a cool dude. Um, but thankfully, I already have Voyager, so there's no reason for me to summon on him. And yeah, for this unit, uh, for this event itself, I forget what kind of event it's actually supposed I think it's a very easy one, though. I think it's just like, here's some main quest, here's some quests, do it. There's an event shop. I don't think there's anything too major about it, honestly. No nothing that I can remember, just free quest. Fell MP NPCs changed, challenge quests. An art museum is where Holy Grail is being exceptionally collect event currency. Yeah, this is just an old basic one. There's not really much. <laughs> so there you go. Very simple event, but I'll take it. And then, of course, I don't know if we already have the Amakasu animation up there. I'm going to assume we do because it's North America, but we will get this outfit at the very least. And yeah. Caldea Boy Collection 2023 is what it's going to be called for us. Obviously, like I said, you'll be able to get this uh, Caldea Boys Collection, which will allow you to get one of these CEs for free. I don't think any of them pop out to me as being better than the rest for whatever reason. I always go with art because most of the time that's how I choose to <laughs> collect the CEs from the men's collection. But yeah, you do you for when it's time to pick one. Login bonus. This is always nice. Log in every day to get one of these and then you can exchange it for a ticket. I think these are called the CBC 2020 
three for us. If you missed a login period, you won't be able to get the Phantom Thief notice letter if you do not get all seven notice letters, so it's very important that you get all seven of them. And yeah, on the seventh day, we don't get another ticket. We get uh, this Phantom Thief hat, which is this command code. So if we get six tickets and a command code, sure. We're at Prism Exchange Update. You can get the Calvedia Boys Collection 20, the one for last year, for three rare mana prisms. These are the same campaigns as always. Again, yeah, they'll have avatars for all this stuff, for all your men, to get your boys. Good times. Uh, and then there's a class-based summoning campaign. Uh, don't summon on this. There's nothing more to really say about this other than don't summon on it. I think there's a chance to get story locked, but it's not li it's, I mean, story locked is like limited with extra steps. Um, but still really don't, don't summon on it. <laughs> Unless you really care about like, for some reason you're a real big fan of Gils the Reyes, the caster form. He's story locked, and you're like, ah, this is a perfect time for me to co complete my collection and get Gil's the Riss. Or, that's literally the only scenario in my head. So for the 1% of people who are looking for that, maybe this is your best chance of getting him. But I would just say don't do it. Like, you don't have to have every single three unless you plan to use every single three of them. And Gil's the Riss is not good. It's a shame that he's not good, because I like him. Uh, because it's, because I like almost every character from Zero, but still, it's not very good. And now, yeah, just, just don't summon it, don't worry about it, <laughs> don't worry about it. And the actual new event that should be happening is the Akihabara Explosion, featuring Galatea, I believe is her name. Summoning campaign, you can look right here. Yes, Galatea. She's a five-star berserker. Um, she's, I believe, AOE quick. Not AOE quick. I think she's uh, arts. Anti-object deals damage to one enemy, nine hits. Yeah, not a lot of people talk about Galatea in general. I, I remember her being released and people making fun of her pants, and that's basically it. It's a damn shame if you're a Galatea fan, though. As someone who is a fan of a character who is maybe not as well-liked in Fago as other people would say, I wish you the best of luck if you do end up trying to go for her. I'm not going to be going for her because I don't really see a point. I don't really need one. She's also not, like, limited. <laughs> so it's actually possible for you to get her with a free five-star thing later down the road. I don't think they're going to be doing it this year, but when they do another one, you can definitely get her that way. So, yeah, really no... You have to be dedicated, and if you're that dedicated, I wish you the best. More people would likely go for Bride over Galatea, chances are, because she's actually limited. And it's Nero. Um, there should also be a Servant Strength up for Nero. Some campaign stuff, like a login bonuses. Two tickets right there, which is pretty nice. Some uh, one half AP interlude camp kind of campaign kind of stuff. I think it's just based off a of campaign, though. Um... Yeah, and then the event itself is like a tower quest, which if you've never done tower quest, it's kind of interesting, um, where you have to basically climb a bunch of levels. I think it's around 150 for this one. Yeah, there's a bunch of floors. Then on those floors is even more. It might actually be more than 150. Oh my god, Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's a lot of... There's a lot. <laughs> and But it's okay, because typically what you do with it is that you use um, a servant, and you kind of just go through it, and usually that one servant solos everything. Um, and then you can put them in a resting area to make them so you can get them back. So there's actually a limit to how much you can use a unit unless you put them in a resting area so you can use them sooner. So this event 100% favors people who have a lot of dudes just ready at, at to, as access to go. Um, so if you don't have a lot of dudes, I would suggest you start getting a lot of dudes awakened and get to get to it yeah as you can see here you're limited on how many do you it's typically three and i usually only ever use one servant to kind of go through everything and then they get fati fatigued i think this is actually a very interesting style of event they don't do it a lot because it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot of it's a lot <laughs> it's a lot to go through um but i always like this kind of structure because it is a little bit different from a lot of the other things that we do here and yeah, that's basically all of March. Uh, we're going to continue rolling forward as the big thing is obviously we need to somehow... We need to somehow get to Anniversary, which the NA Anniversary is actually in... I think it's in July. 
So yeah, in in July though. Uh, by July we would have all we would have, need to already have a lot of stuff ready for this GSSR. So I expect a lot of Lost Belt Six stuff to kind of come up early. I don't know how early, but I do expect it to be early because again these two need to be on it. So. And there's just no way in hell they're not going to be on it because anytime, very it happened very few times, but in the very few times where NA has not gotten 100%, they don't complain when we get something better, but they definitely do complain when it's not 100% the way JP got it. Either it has to be exactly the same or better. That's the only thing that NA will accept. And yeah, we're just going to continue waiting for that day, basically. But yeah, that's what it's looking like for March. Pretty simple. It's a pretty simple month, I'd say. For the vast majority of people, it's going to be a lot of saving, a lot of just kind of chilling around. This was, again, a pretty... It was pretty dead for the vast majority of a lot of these months because, you know, that's when the pandemic was going full crazy swing. So it's kind of like that for two years. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'll be interested to see if they, anything gets kind of moved up in the timeline now that I guess they're not really deal. I actually don't know anything about how they're dealing with it on the JP side, so yeah, that's all speculation on my part. But that's it for March. I will see you guys in the next video. Wish you guys the best of luck if you're summoning. Have a good day. Remember to leave a like and comment and subscribe. Do all those good stuff. It helps out the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.